so that's it for this. Let's we're going to um, cut this segment of top tips and tricks um, and then we're going to go over to pageant reports pieces. So uh, what we'll do here for this one is uh, I will jump into um, my tenant hopefully. Um, probably going to log you in, isn't it? Oops. Try this one. Gonna log in with the secure password. Pretty princess one, two, three. Oops. Not now. All right, so we're going to start off with a data set space. So I've got a, a workspace. It is on premium, and I'm going to show you all kind of the back end pieces of this. Uh, we have some data sets in here. We have this thing called sunset layout or this dev embedded one. I don't know if this one actually has measures in it, but we're going to use a sunset layout one. So this is a report that lives here. It's already data modeled, and this is going to lean on that principle of we want to build a data model. One of the things I've been doing a lot recently with a lot of these reports is I don't typically build reports now that have data models attached to the report. It's very hard to manage the distribution of that one report versus that data model. And if you break the report, the model freaks out and weird stuff happens. So I, almost all my projects now, I'm breaking the reports into two pieces. There's one report that I do all the data modeling in, which is kind of nice because if I'm working on a dual monitor setup, I'm putting the report on the left hand side of my screen, modeling data here, publishing that to the service, and then I'm picking up that report with the service on another report that I'm live connecting back to that service. So I'm still using analysis services. I'm still getting all the super speed that I want, but now I can manage my measures inside my other report, and then I can build local measures in my report as well. We've done this for, in, the, in, in this group, we've done it for pretty much Power BI only, but you can also analyze in Excel the same way, make the model, publish the model, analyze in Excel. This is a third option now of, let's take that same data model that we've built, and let's drop a paginated report on top of it, and then publish that to the service. So, um, I'm going to edit this report here real quick and just show you that there in fact is some data in here. So here's the overview page and we do have these list of items here uh, as elements that we can use. So we have you know, IDs or colors or product categories that here live inside this data model that we may want to have the page report of all the things that are of these, I these elements. So, and I will, I will caveat this. The Power BI Premium, you do need a minimum of an A4 SKU to use this feature. An A4 SKU is the equivalent of a P1. So if you have a P1, you can already use this feature. So uh, what I'll do now is go back to the resource group, workspace, and we'll go in here to the properties. So click in the ellipsis, workspace settings, go into the premium button, and you'll see now I have a little link. So this is my premium tenant location ID for this report. Copy that one. All right, next we're going to open up Power BI Report Builder. Once this loads, we're going to click here on Make a Matrix Visual up here at the top. Once you click on this, we'll click Next through this window for data sets. Then we'll click New, and then here we will start entering our information for our connection strings. So I went into the credentials. I added my credentials for what me to, for me to access the data set. So that was that was my portion there. <laughs> selected this username and password. So I'll zoom in so you can see what we're doing. So this is what I selected from a credential standpoint. And then I went over to the general properties area. I selected SQL Server Analysis Services. That's the one we're using. And then I clicked the build icon, dropped in the URL. So this is the URL of the Power BI. Um, endpoint for the analysis services and then dropped in the sunset layout. So adding this item here, it picked up that there was a sunset layout. <coughs> then I was able to hit test connection and then it worked. So it needed those credentials and that specific way to build a connection. OK, OK, OK. And now we have the data set attached to this report. I can then hit next and now it talks. It walks me through like more of the authoring experience. So next step should be now it's going to look through my data model and give me out information that this looks multidimensional in nature. So maybe they're doing something there that I don't know at 100%. But what I'm going to do is I don't have a lot of measures in this calculation group or this, this data set. All I have is pretty much dimensions and some number columns. So I'm going to grab the, uh, the product ID. We'll add that one to my list. 
And then I will go grab just something like weight. I think weight is a numerical value. And I can execute it. And what it should do, do return is, oh, these all have null values. Okay, there's some weights with nulls, not nulls. So here's my list of values that I'm going to get. This is the data that I'm going to receive back from my cube. So for now, let's just say that's that's good. Maybe I'll, let's see, we'll go stretch a little bit more here. Let's add color here and rerun this one. So now I have some colors in here as well that I can use for my data. Now I can click next. It'll then take me to this next area. So now I can say, okay, this is making me a table of the report. I can now pick the various elements that I want. So I can say, I want the weight to be in my values area and I want the ID to be my row and color on my row level. Then I should be able to hit next. And so this will, this is how it will group the information. It'll be ID, color, weight. This is how it will order things and I can um, add and expand or collapse groups or items or other options here in this report. I'm going to remove the expand and collapse items and just hit next. Uh, this looks good for now. We've got some data and then it will drop it on there. So the neat part about this is this this is your pixel perfect report right now. We're talking like standard. We can print things. So whenever I hear use cases around people saying I need to print this data or I'm going to get this is what I want to point them to. I still want to build the data model. I still want to shape the data that they're going to need to put out on the report, but this is really where I'm pushing people to say, look, if you want to print things, this is made for printing. So we go over here. We can add a custom title. Power BI dot tips typos demo. All right, and then now we can hit run it. So now it will go through. You can add images, headers and footers, all the normal stuff that you could do. And so now it's been able to make my list and now I have pages and pages of data that I can start playing around with here. So I have totals for each of the rows. Fine, maybe this is what I want for the report. We're good. I'm going to save this now. Save the report. Let's drop it on our desktop. Sample report. Saved. I can now get out of the uh, the report builder, and now we can go. Over, we can hop back over to PowerBI.com. So going back to PowerBI.com, we're now back in our workspace. I can click the Get Data button. Get Data button down here at the bottom. Then we click get and then click over here on local file. Local file will bring up a little prompt window. Here's the prompt window. So I can go here and then my sample report RDL, drop it in, should connect to my data set and boom, there's my sample report. And now that is hosted in powerbay.com. And so now I should be able to then print out pages of reports right from here as well. So now here's my report and I've got one page of who knows how many. There's 20 pages of reports.